Good morning, everyone. Uh, I know it's a Saturday, but I had a really good question, and I had told the person I would answer. She asked if we're in the end time. She goes, look at all these viruses, children disobedient to their parents, needles I don't want to take, uh, corrupt governments. She says she'd like to know. So I, I want to go to, as always, the Word of God to talk about this. But really, before we do, I, I, I want to give a simple answer. The answer is yes. We've been in the end times since Jesus left. Since he left. Because now, since he left, he's returning. And so we're always on watch. Now, it's easy for us to interpret the days and the scriptures, but I want us to go into the the uh, gospel of, of Matthew. We're going to look at a few verses here from Jesus' own words. Okay, so it says, Jesus left and was going out of the temple complex. His disciples came up and called his attention to the temple buildings. And he replied to them, don't you see all these things? I assure you, not stone will be left here on another that will not be thrown down. And of course, 70 years later, it happened. Or 40 years later, it happened, AD 70. While he was sitting on the Mount of Olives, the disciples approached him privately and said, tell us when all these things will happen. And what is the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? Then Jesus replied to them, Watch out that no one deceives you. You notice this. When they asked Jesus the sign of the coming of the end, he said, Be careful that no one deceives you. He opens with that. What does this mean for us? That people will come to deceive us. Now, I'm going to tell you, floods, fires, famines, wars, and rumors of wars, they're nothing new. People have been using them to interpret. But here's the problem is, we get so focused on the end, we fail to recognize our mission. Here's what I mean. Let's go back to it. Watch out that no one deceives you. For many will come in my name saying, I am the Messiah and will deceive many. You're going to hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you're not alarmed because these things must take place, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise up against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines and earthquakes in various places. All of these are the beginning of birth pains. Then they'll hand you over for persecution and they will kill you. You'll be hated by all nations because of my name. Then many will take offense, betray one another, and hate one another. Many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. Because lawlessness will multiply, the love of many will grow cold. That breaks my heart. But the one who endures to the end will be delivered. The good news of the kingdom will be proclaimed in all the world as a testimony to all nations, and then the end will come. We are here to proclaim the word of God. That is our mission. That is our focus. That is our goal. Now, Jesus goes on many other things. He talks about the great tribulation and the coming of the Son of Man. Then he gives the parable of the fig tree. But here's what he says after he, he lists all that going further into Matthew uh, 24, verse 36. Now, concerning that day and the hour, no one knows, neither the angels in heaven, nor the Son, except the Father only. As the days of Noah's were, so the coming of the Son of Man will be. For in those days before the flood, they were eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage until the day Noah boarded the ark. They didn't know until the flood came and swept them all away. So this is the way the coming of the Son of Man will be. Jesus is telling us that it will come like a thief. We're not to sit here and wait and interpret times and hours. It's already here. And for some of us, let's consider this. Our role and our job is to spread the gospel, to preach the good news, to go and tell everyone about Jesus. That is what we're here to do. The end will come after that, after all the world has heard it. It says in Second Peter 3 that God tarries because he wants that no man should perish. Echoing the voice of the prophet Ezekiel, God does not delight in the wicked man. 
Are we living in the last days? We always have been. Since Christ left, we've been living in the last days. Because the power of Satan is cast down, according to the book of Revelation. The power of Satan is ended. Jesus put sin and rebellion to death on that cross. Its days are numbered. Death, is his days are numbered. Satan, his days are numbered. We have been living in the last days because Christ said it is finished. Now we need to go and preach this message. This is the message we need to speak. We don't need to talk about the end times because here's the fact that some of us won't be here tomorrow. Car accidents, cancers, heart attacks, physical disease, gunshots, violence. We are not promised one more day than today. And so we need to preach the gospel. We need to reach the lost. We need to, to feed the sick and, and, and seek out the welfare of our neighbor. To give them the good news of Christ and bring them to him. That they too may know his wonderful, boundless, glorious riches. This is our mandate. This is our goal. Now, I'm going to skip ahead again. Just a little further. Verse 45, who then is faithful and sensible, or who then is a faithful and sensible slave, whom is his master has put in charge of his household to give them food at the proper time. The slave whose master finds him working when he comes will be rewarded. I assure you, he will put him in charge of all his possessions. But if that wicked slave says in his heart, my master is delayed. And starts to beat his fellow slaves and eats and drinks with drunkards. That slave's master will come on a day when he does not expect. And at an hour he does not know. He will cut him to pieces and assign him a place with the hypocrites. In that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. So what does Jesus tell us to do? Always be ready. Always be prepared. From the day he was with us in visitation among the apostles... To now, we are to be patiently waiting, expecting our master's return. We are to be doing the work he has put before us, the works that are labors of love, spreading the good news, loving his people. That is our role. That is what he has assigned us. Beloved, it's not for us to interpret the times and the seasons. Christ is returning. And someday all will stand before him. But we spread that good news that we don't have to stand before him in fear. That we can be in his book of life. Preach the word. That is the point. That is what we are here for. That is our role. Show people the power of love by your obedience to Christ. By loving your neighbor as yourself. As you love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. And by being unified with your brothers and sisters in Christ. Show the power of love as you are unified with God through his word. As you know it, as you read it, as you study it. You'll be ready. You'll be ready when the time comes. Whether it's now, as individuals, as we pass from this earth. Or whether... It is that time when Jesus once again returns to make all things new. Just be faithful. Just be faithful. The point of revelation, the point of all the end times prophecies, was to remind the faithful to remain faithful. Be faithful. Stand firm on the word of God. Be faithful. I hope that helps. Let me know what you think. Like, share, um, Let's talk about this. This isn't the Brian show. This is about Christ Jesus and us receiving him and being there with him together. It's being unified in Christ. Let me know what you think. I'd love to hear your thoughts. God bless you.